Welcome everyone to the May 24th uh, morning flux meeting. Good morning if you're on the Eastern time. Uh, I'm a little bit under the weather today, so I'm going to let the meeting host itself more or less. Um, I see we have one, one agenda item so far. Uh, if anyone else has additional agenda items, please add them to the topics. And is there anyone who would like to volunteer to speak first? I can speak a little bit. Hey everyone, we are uh, in the process of doing the final release candidate for Flux, uh, release candidate four. This is the last planned um, candidate before we do GA. Um, this, this one comes with um, most needed update to the um, customized libraries that we've been using in Flux. Back in February, customize, uh, the customized team have released customized version 5, which comes with many breaking changes. And we haven't been able to upgrade Flux customized control and all the other um, components. Um, because, yeah, it's complicated. Kubernetes, kubectl imports customized. Customized had the breaking changes in the API, so we had to wait for Kubernetes 1.27 to be released. Then there were some issues there, so we waited even longer. All those issues were fixed in uh, Kubernetes 1.27.2. So we are now finally rolling out um, the customized upgrade across all components, controllers, CLI, and so on. Um, along with this, we are also uh, doing some other um, dependency updates. We've switched uh, source controller to cosign 2.0 for the OCI verification part. And we've upgraded hand controller to the latest hand version. So um, yeah, please, after we do the release candidate for, please upgrade your clusters and let us know if uh, uh, everything is working fine. Thank you. That's it from me. Awesome. Thank you, Stefan. Um, I think the next issue for us is the Google season of docs. Uh, we have uh, Mehak here, who is our um, docs writer. Um, Mehak, would you like to say a few words about your concordance sheet? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, so let me see if I can share my screen. You should be able to. All right. Yes, I can. Okay. So assuming that you can see my screen. Um, so this is this is how the concordance sheet looks like. This is essentially a reflection of what we see on the documentation side itself. Um, so all the main sections on the navigation side bar, they are mentioned in column A, and there and then their child pages are mentioned in column B, and we have links to each. Uh, I had a chat with Amal uh, yesterday, and I also walked her through the process that I had in my mind, and she suggested that we assign a priority uh, level to each of these sections so that we don't like follow uh, her opinion was that we focus on those sections first which are high priority and think about how we can improve the navigation of those specific sections and then we move on to the low priority sections so as at the moment um, this the the sheet is blank it has these drop downs from which we can select the high priority section 
And for that, I will probably be requiring a sync up with uh, the relevant forks, the relevant POCs. So the first step is to define the, prior the priority. The second step is to define the target audiences. Uh, back in search manager, when I did this effort, what we did initially was uh, define, the search, uh, define the target audience for the documentation. For example, this is the name of the, the category of target audience, and these are the roles and responsibilities associated to those target audiences. So this is something, uh, this is exact, we need to do something similar for Flux as well, because then only we can uh, 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 understand that what uh, what uh, documentation is, documentation pages targeted to which type, which kind of target audience. And then we can like further take this effort forward. I created a, uh, a, a subsheet over here with the name of target audience, and it has very some it has some very high level definitions and descriptions that came to the top of my mind while I was going through the documentation. This um, might not represent a complete picture. However, I would require input from the relevant POCs to uh, assist me with this so that uh, once these things are defined, it will make my life easier in going forward and suggesting a plan based upon what page is meant for what kind of target audience. Thirdly, we have these action item pages where the idea is that once we have uh, identified uh, these two things, we can then further look, uh, do, a, do an evaluation of uh, the type of content uh, within the page. And then we can like further, further define if we need to uh, break this certain page into sub pages, or do we do we need to move concepts elsewhere? So all, all that kind of stuff has been captured over here. These are again some of the high-level categories that uh, uh, that I have added over here. If there are some other use cases that you think might we might encounter, encounter, please feel free to suggest. And then lastly, there is this column I. Uh, so the idea is that once we have identified what needs to be done for this specific page, uh, we can further uh, tag the status of uh, uh, of the work that needs to be done uh, using this column. Uh, whether uh, so, if we have decided to break this into parts, um, I can like uh, go on and then uh, update the status and just for you to understand whether the work for breaking this into sub pages, whether it's in progress or is it in review, what the PR created, etc. And these are just like uh, this column is just about the number of uh, the content length of a specific page, uh, just in case if you want to see that how long or short a page is. Again, this is just a high level uh, uh, document that I believe will help us with planning, but uh, any input from the community will be highly appreciated. Hey, this looks great. Um, did you have the chance to look over the proposal we had from SIG Docs around the new structure of the sections? Do you mean uh, um, the link to the tickets which was mentioned in the proposal? Kingdom, do you know what I'm talking about? I'm not sure what you mean. I'm not completely familiar with these docs myself uh, at this point. I'm playing catch up uh, like because of conferences and sickness after conference. But um, this looks like CNCF tech docs assessment. Yeah, Stefan is talking about uh, the issue that's open now on screen, 717. Okay, I did go through these issues, and the idea is that uh, we will be populating the column I based upon the input that, or based upon the recommend recommendations uh, that, that we see on these tickets. I'm aware of these tickets, and uh, I went, went through this, but 
uh, the idea is that before we jump to uh, jump to this point, uh, I think it's important to identify the target audiences. I mean, that's what I think, but uh, the floor is open for any feedback or suggestions. Okay, so who needs to do what next? Um, I guess uh, if you could let me know who should I coordinate with to finalize the target audiences, that would help me. And then I can take this action item on me to coordinate with them and then finalize this for a start. And then definitely the next thing would be to consider all, all these tickets which are mentioned over here and then come up with a action item for each uh, page based upon what we see uh, on these tickets. Can I get a quick view on the personas again? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think one thing that may be missing, and it's not as much as the requirement for the documentation, but still someone that may end up on your website is like someone that's, um, these are all technical roles basically, right? Yes, that's right. I'm assuming that the technical, uh, the individuals with technical background will be essentially be using stuff. That's my assumption. Yeah, I don't know. I, I was thinking like um, quite a lot of people know about our, the, our name of a project. Also, people that aren't, aren't necessarily the people executing the, the whole thing, but rather, I don't know, managing a group of people or doing business decisions, whatever. Um, and there may be some high level doc pages there where we can still create a basic explanation of what we do. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure if that's worth including as an as an audience. Let me think about it, and I will get back to you at over Slack or something. Okay, sure. Um, so from what I gather, you want to have a page that covers what Flux does, right? Um. Yeah, but then for people that not that may have some technical background but aren't an expert on 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 the details of it, so like and explain it like I'm five kind of thing, which just gives you a very brief explanation of um, what the project does, but doesn't get into um, the full technical details. Okay. Yeah, I mean that's a good idea. We can certainly look into it. Um, I was under the impression that perhaps we can focus more on these areas as a starting point. And then we can uh, also like uh, down the lane, we can also address any gap, any knowledge gaps or uh, add, page, add pages just like the one you suggested. Yeah, that's satisfying to me. Like the, the, the just, keep the project scope. I was more looking at the list and I was like, well, there might be an additional type of user that somehow ends up on the website. Um, yeah. And by okay. not taking that persona into account at all, um, mm -hmm. you kind of create a new gap. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I got it. So should I call it a potential user or a visitor? Um, they're probably not users. I think I understand what you're saying, Hida, is these these are people who might be decision makers. Who yes. Just need yes. to be aware of what they're doing at a high they level. They need to know at a high level what it does without getting into like the, the, the deep details of the documentation because they trust the the, the, the the people they manage or whatever, the people inside their company and other team to kind of mm -hmm. um, figure out the technical details but to make their decision they need to be able to at least get a high level understanding of what the project does and how at times how it compares to other things for example or how it's like um 
yeah, like an explain it like I'm five kind of thing in which they just get a very brief grasp of the problem we are trying to solve. Um, but they will never get beyond the one or maybe two pages which dive into those details. They, I mean, that's not up to them. It's, it's, um, it's much more about, hey, I want to make a decision if my team is doing the right thing. Okay. Understood. Yeah, and if we don't identify those folks as an audience here, then it will remain difficult to point them at a specific uh, okay. page or doc. Yeah, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Do we have any more suggestions or feedback on this one? I'm I'm good with it. Okay. Um so Kingdom, should we take this offline and uh, discuss if we are good with these target audiences? Just not to prolong the discussion right now over here. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to follow this up with you in a separate meeting. Um, okay. One additional question. What's the timeline for kind of uh, uh, you're doing week by week, right? Sorry, I, I quickly read your, um, uh, your, your message in the... Uh, action plan mm -hmm. if i want to provide additional feedback basically um how long do i have because i'm managing a release right now and i may have some time to dive deeper into this afterwards so what's what's the ideal time you have kind of gathered the feedback from us to go to the next stage well um i was wondering if we could at least be at a position where we could uh, uh populate the column G for the entire document. Having that said, if there's any additional feedback that you think you might want to give uh, once you have some bandwidth, just let me know um, uh, the ETA on it, like how soon do you think you, you'll be able to provide feedback so that uh, I'm aware of it. And in the meanwhile, what I can also do is that um, uh, populate column G based upon my understanding after the discussion with Kingdom and uh, focus more on column edge and take these consider these recommendations into consideration. Because of course, I even the next step for me after populating column G is to move to column edge. Okay. Um, okay, that gives me enough information. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that's it from my side. Thank you very much, Mahak. Uh, do we have any other agenda items that we need to cover today? I don't really think we do. We are very busy, busy rolling out the release itself. Um, I want to thank Sanskar for uh, finally getting rid of the whole go git fork. Uh, all our contributions are now upstream, so we can ditch that, which is very great, in addition to the last release candidate itself. Um, besides that, I don't think we have anything else. While I have Stefan and Ada and Sunny, all of you here, so I noticed when I updated source controller that it now like gives me a deprecation warning about uh, the untar package being deprecated. So I'm thinking of switching all of the uses to the tar package. That's okay. What package? Uh, the untar package and flux CD slash package. Uh, yes. We need to get rid of that everywhere. So yeah, so I'm uh, doing that as well uh, uh, alongside updating source controller to use the upstream go uh, repository. Yeah, tar should be a swap in. Okay. Yeah, it is. it is. Yeah, that's it for myself. 
Uh, while we're discussing this, uh, do we already have a list of things to be included in, in the next RC? What? The next RC being the one that hasn't been tagged yet, or you think there will be an RC5? Four. But that's what you're working on right now. See the uh, issue in Flux2. Uh, there is a change in the OCI auth package, which we can include. Uh, it's issue number 516 package repository, 560. It's ready, we should be able to include it, but it also requires, uh, it should just work with source controller. Source controller can just use a new version of OCI package. It fixes the issue in Azure, OIC, OIDC login. Did you review it? Yes, uh, I've been reviewing it. It's, it's ready now. I just have to go through it once. Yeah, if it's just a bump, then it's probably best to just include it, given that uh, we are still pending other dependency updates anyway. OK. Is this a breaking change? No, it's not a breaking change. If you read it, it's carefully changed such a way it's not breaking anything. It's adding. No, even the, even the meta signatures are uh, backwards compatible from what I see at the moment. It's adding new functions to be less uh, like related to OCI and more of a general OIDC login. And the plan is to create another OIDC pods package, which is not specific to OCI, it can be used for anything, maybe Git provider contextual login or anything. We, we have the code now. Hmm. Okay, so please add this to the umbrella issue. So everybody knows what to do are. Also, please review 563, rebase, and release it if it's okay. Um, we That's should be... which was free? retry back off for transport. All oh, right, right. I'll go through. That's we've been struggling a lot delivering this feature, and uh, I think what Santochi did vendoring the um, with retry transport from. Uh, Go container registry is the only way to do it right now. And it's not that much code vendor. So I would um, really like to get this in. The, um, the issue is that for some reason, the, <clears throat> the registry package only retries three times and then it bails out while flux push has a timeout flag and retrying three times for large images or on flaky connections is definitely not enough and people don't expect for the flux push timeout the retry to um redo the operations until that timeout expires. So Sunny, can you take this on? Mm -hmm. I went through this a few weeks ago and we had a discussion about copying that those code from Go container registry project. Yeah, I'll go through it. Okay, thank you. Uh, I created a Helm controller PR to replace the other uh, PR that was contributed by someone else. Uh, if someone can review that, then I think the Helm controller is ready. 692, right? Uh, 692, yeah. Okay, I'll do that. So we are ready to release notification controller, right? Uh, 
I've I've merged the last bug fix. Though CI stuff is not in notification controller, so that can be released. Um, Sunny, the OEDC changes affect image reflector controller, right? So we shouldn't be releasing no, that. No, it, it should be fine. Image reflector will work. The problem was the way Helm OCI was passing the input was incorrect. So it's source so, controller only. It's only source controller. So it's source controller. Okay. So and theoretically, also, we can also push forward with the image reflector controller release. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Let's get to it. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Have a great week. Thanks. Bye.